In this video, I'll give a very quick overview of graphs and digraphs. Now, there are plenty of introductory resources about graphs, and you can find links on the course website. I particularly like the interactive D3 graph theory tutorial. Let me show you uh, what that looks like. Uh, so here's the site, and you can see that it responds to your touch, uh, and the whole tutorial is like that. So that's a lot of fun. I've also put together a couple of quick reference guides for you, one about graphs and one about digraphs, and you can find links to those on the course website. So let's talk about graphs. Now always keep in mind that a graph is a relational model. You have a collection of things, some pairs are related, and others are not. The things are represented by vertices, and the relations are represented by edges. So when two vertices are related, we add that pair to our set of edges. This slide has an example of a graph with four vertices and four edges. Now the official definition of a graph is the pair of sets, so the set of vertices and the set of edges. But it is often more convenient to give a visual representation of a graph by drawing it as a collection of points and lines. Another useful representation is the adjacency matrix. In this square matrix, the entry ij is equal to 1 when the edge ij is present, and otherwise this entry is 0. So here is the adjacency matrix for the example graph from the previous slide. And note that this matrix is symmetric about the diagonal uh, because the edges are undirected. So uh, if the edge 1, 2 is there, so is the edge 2, 1. So what's the difference between a graph and a network? I like to use this informal definition. A network is a graph that means something. Basically, the terms graph and network are interchangeable. But typically, if I talk about a graph, then I'm interested in its mathematical properties outside of any application. If I talk about a network, then I'm concerned with the context. I want to know what the network structure tells me about the complex system being represented. So here's a real world network, the airline route map of Sun Country Airlines, which is a, a regional airline based here in the Twin Cities. The vertices are cities, and pairs of cities are joined by an edge when there is a direct flight between them. Now, in a network, we often talk about nodes and links rather than vertices and edges, but these terms are interchangeable. So let's talk about some basic vocabulary for graphs and networks using this graph as an example. Here, vertices U and V are adjacent because they are joined by the edge UV. That edge UV is incident with the vertices U and V. Vertex W is incident with three edges, and so the degree of W is three. And now let's look at vertex Z. Z has a loop, which is an edge that goes from the vertex to itself, and it has degree four because the loop actually contributes two to the degree of Z. Now the degree sequence of G is a listing of all the degrees that we see here, and we typically list these degrees in weakly increasing order, like you see. Now let's talk about subgraphs. If we start with a graph G, and we take some of the vertices, and then take some of the edges which join these vertices, we get another graph. This is called a subgraph of G. And here are three different examples of subgraphs. So here H1, H2, and H3. The last subgraph, H3, is an induced subgraph. In an induced subgraph, we take all the original edges that join the vertices that we have chosen. The subgraphs H1 and H2 are not induced subgraphs. This is because we have left out some of the original edges between these vertices. Now let's talk about using edges to move between vertices. 
A walk is a sequence of the vertices that we can visit by walking along the edges. And so here's an example of a walk. We can start at vertex x and then go to y, then back to x, then to w, and then to v, and then to u, and then end at w. A circuit, or a closed walk, is a walk that ends where it started. So here's an example. Uh, we can start at x and go to w, and then to v, then to u, then to w, then back to v, and then finally we go back to x. So we end where we started. A path is a walk with no repeated vertices. And so one example of a path would be starting at u and then going to v and then to x and then to y. And note that, of course, if we don't repeat any vertices, we can't repeat any edges either. Finally, let's talk about a cycle. Uh, so a cycle is a circuit or a closed walk whose only repetition is the first and last vertex. And so here's one example of a cycle. We can start at w, go to u, go to v, to x, and then back to w. If there is a walk between each pair of vertices in the graph, then we say that the graph is connected. Otherwise, it's disconnected. A connected component of a graph is a maximal connected subgraph of G, meaning that there are no edges from that subgraph to other vertices of G. Another way of saying this is that we can partition G into disjoint subgraphs that are themselves connected graphs. These connected subgraphs are the components of G. Next, I'm going to give a very quick intro to directed graphs. A digraph consists of a set of vertices along with a set of one-way edges between them. These one-way edges are called directed edges or arcs. As this example shows, we can have a single arc between two vertices, or we can have arcs going in both directions. Now that our edges are directed, vertices have two kinds of degrees, in-degree and out-degree. The in-degree is the number of arcs pointing into the vertex, and the out-degree is the number of arcs pointing away from the vertex. This means that there are actually two different degree sequences for a directed graph. The in-degree sequence lists the in-degrees of the digraph, and the out-degree sequence lists the out-degrees. Typically, we list each of these in weakly increasing order. And this means that the vertex ordering for the in-degree sequence will be different from the ordering that we use for the out-degree sequence. There are two types of connectivity for a digraph, weak connectivity and strong connectivity. First, let's talk about weakly connected digraphs. We take the digraph D and we create an undirected graph G by turning all the one-way arcs into two-way edges, like this. And if the resulting graph, which is undirected, is a connected graph, then we say that the digraph D that we started with is weakly connected. So this is an example of a weakly connected digraph. Our second notion is strongly connected. A digraph is strongly connected when there is a directed path between any ordered pair of vertices. And note that this means that there must be a directed path from U to V and a directed path from V to U for every choice of U and V because here order of the pair matters. The vertices 0 and 4 have this property in our example digraph. If I start at 0, there is a directed path that will get me to 4, and if I start at 4, there is a directed path that will get me to 0. On the other hand, the vertices 0 and 1 do not have this property. I can get from 0 to 1, but I cannot get back. So this digraph, 
actually has five strongly connected components. And note that two of these strongly connected components are actually uh, single vertices. So vertex 6 is a strongly connected component by itself, and the vertex 1 is a strongly connected component by itself. There's a whole lot more to say about graphs and digraphs, and this video is just supposed to get you started. So now you should check out the other graph and digraph resources on our course website. So I encourage you to keep on exploring.